So hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're here for a very exciting panel. In fact, I think this is the best panel of the, of the whole conference. So it's called Before uh, Crypto, After Crypto. And it, I'm David Waxman, so I'm the CEO of Waxman, which is the world's largest PR agency for blockchain companies and for companies working on blockchain. And I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of companies that are thinking about doing an ICO, exchanges that, let's say, support the ecosystem, consortia, various different types. But what we're seeing now, and what we've seen actually for, quite, for a little bit of time, is real companies with real revenues that have decided to go and embrace the blockchain revolution. And they're not doing it in a boring way. So here today are three CEOs of some of the most important companies in what is now financial technology, even if some of them had to take a little bit of time to get there. Uh, these are very large companies with significant valuations, uh, and these CEOs have earned their place there. And all of them are actually technically minded, as it turns out. So I'd like to go and introduce you first to Yoni Osia of eToro. I'd like to introduce you to Ted Livingston of Kick, and I'd like to introduce you to Slava Rubin of Indiegogo. So say hello, everybody. So the first question is, why? Why would you take your already profitable businesses that are doing really well, your interesting businesses with millions of users, why would you even consider blockchain? I think we just realized we were playing this super unfair game. And if we didn't find a new game to play, uh, we would get killed. So Kick is one of the most popular smartphone messengers in the world, billion dollar valuation, Tencent put in $50 million. We've been building that for almost 10 years now. I was much younger when I started. And along the way, we realized we could build this amazing consumer service, but how do we make money? You know, and, and when it came to making money, our only option was advertising, which we never loved, this idea of manipulating people to buy stuff that they Like Facebook. Like Facebook. But not only that, but Facebook and Google have monopolies on advertising. And then not only that, if you get anywhere close to them, you get to their scale, that's when they turn on their you know, evil empire mode and they turn to copy and crush you. And so we were the first messenger to go viral in 2010, first one to become a platform in 2011, first one to do bots in 2014, and every time they would just copy us and crush us. Do the same thing to us that they're doing to Snapchat with Instagram stories, that they're doing to so many others. And we said, this is one, it's super unfair, it's bad for consumers, but we can't just sit here and complain, we need a different way. And we realized back in 2011 when we first saw Bitcoin that that might be for the first time in like thousands of years a new monetization model for consumer apps where we could say, hey, instead of trying to extract value through advertising, what if instead we created a new digital asset of guaranteed scarcity, a cryptocurrency, we set some of that aside for ourselves, and then we use our community to grow demand for it, to, to get them earning and spending in that cryptocurrency. That way, one, we could have a model that allowed us to make money in a way that was aligned with our consumers. We wanted to get them paid so that they could spend and could be something that we could band together with other developers so that this time Facebook couldn't just copy and crush us. We we'll want to learn more about that later on in the conversation. So Ted, you've, in 2017, which I think seems to be a pivotal year here, you actually launched the Kin project, but you've been planning it for some time. In fact, you've actually been involved in the crypto space for for a number of years as well. Do you want to tell us your origin story? Sure. We were looking for another way to monetize the consumer community for a very long time. We just hated the idea that one day we'd have to go from building for the consumer to like building for advertisers at the expense of consumers. And so when Bitcoin came along in 2011, we realized, holy, like, this could be it, this could be it. Like imagine we launched our own Bitcoin and we owned a piece of it and we drove demand for it. And I actually went to a Bitcoin conference in January 2012, six and a half years ago, and Gavin, the lead developer of Bitcoin, was there, and only 11 other people other than myself, so 13 people in the room. <laughs> and I was banging my fist on the table. I was like, guys, this technology is going to change the world. For, for the first time ever, we can guarantee the scarcity of a digital asset. But the go-to-market is totally messed up. Like, what consumer is ever going to use this? Because that's what we do. We build consumer apps. We get millions of consumers to actually use something. And, oh, but the technology, we just want to talk about the technology. 
And so I think most of the crypto industry, even to this day, has been going down the technology road. How can we make the technology better and faster? Whereas for the last six years, we've been going down the product route, the user experience route. And our, our thesis was we could use a consumer community to drive demand for a cryptocurrency. You know, you can th think of Kik as a little country, a little digital country where millions of people show up every day where we're the government. And we can say, hey, if you want to exchange value in our little country, you have to use our currency. And so we did an experiment with Kik Points back in 2014, seeing if we could make this, this work. There's no way to buy or sell kick points. You could only earn it or spend it initially by watching ads and then on smileys. And we got three to 10 times the transaction volume of Bitcoin globally at the time. That was just with two people working on it in a side part of the app. And we just realized that was sort of our unique position is we could be the first ones to get millions of mainstream consumers actually earning and spending in a cryptocurrency as a utility. But along the way, we also realized that it could be much bigger because we realized it wasn't just Kik that Facebook was copying and crushing. It was almost every other developer on the planet. And so let's not put Kik points on the blockchain. Let's create a new cryptocurrency called Kin and incentivize all the developers out there to adopt Kin versus launch their own. Okay, and so, I'm buying Kin. Sounds yeah. like a pretty good <laughs> idea. So, so, Ted, how... So developers, you say, are embracing this. What other applications can people expect to be built on your platform? Or what will be decreasingly your platform? So I think this is the, the really interesting spot we are in is that with Kick alone, we think we can make Kin the most used cryptocurrency in the world. And so everything is in our power. And you know, one of the things people talk about is, you know, we started with Ethereum, and then we moved to Ethereum, and then we moved to Stellar, and then it was Ethereum plus Stellar, and now we just announced last week it's going to be Ethereum plus our fork of Stellar. And everybody's saying, man, these guys are, like, changing their minds so often. And it's not that we're changing our minds so often. It's that we are learning faster, I think, than any, almost anybody in the space. I think Kin is very unique in that it's not a technology trying to find a product. It's a product trying to piece together the technology. And so whatever the fastest way we can do that is, is the way we can put together this ecosystem. So you're a product maximalist, not a protocol. I'm a consumer guy. Like, what do consumers want, right? I think, like, a big problem and you know, decentralize the world. Like, my mom's like, decentral what does that mean? What does that mean? I just, I just want to use my app. Like, we are not trying to create decentralized apps. In fact, one of my contrarian views is I think decentralized apps are a massive head fake in this space. But we'll see if that plays out. Why? Because centralized kick is better than decentralized kick. Centralized Instagram is better than decentralized Instagram. Consumers just want it to be fast and work well. But what consumers do want is they want innovation. They want new and interesting stuff. And this is the problem with the advertising model, and this is the problem with Facebook just copying everything for themselves, is they're destroying innovation. And they're taking everything for themselves at the expense of consumers. And so with Kin, what we're doing, it's, a, it's not decentralized apps, it's a decentralized currency <laughs> and a decentralized incentive protocol you know, you can think of what Bitcoin did for miners, Kin does for developers, to incentivize all these developers to adopt Kin and build interesting ways to earn and spend it. And so I think it's like the exciting thing now is we've shown that we can get millions of people earning and spending in a currency, a new currency. And so now it's been piecing together the technology. We think with the announcement we made last week, we have that first piece now. The next step is to get it launched inside Kik, and with Kik alone, make it the most used cryptocurrency in the world. And then the third and final step is to have the fastest growing ecosystem of apps. So it's not just Kick, but it's live streaming apps, games, all sorts of different apps, all these places where consumers can go to earn and spend Kick. Well, it's, a, it's an ambitious roadmap. So I think what the, the, the main message that I'm getting from, from what you guys are saying is that millions of people today are interested in, in cryptocurrencies, today. How do we make it billions of people? Ted, you've been building products that are intended for that. Let's start there. G giving away kin would be a great start. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's the biggest question for the industry right now, is how do we actually get consumers to use it? Uh, I think when you look at a lot of other projects, they talk about how complicated the technology is, how many PhDs they have, all these things about the technology. And we can never explain it to you, but let us try. Let us try. It's so complicated. And I just sit there and I listen. And I'm like, but how are you going to get people to use it? And it seems like nobody in the world is focused on that. This is the question that we have been focused on. This is the thing I pointed out six and a half years ago, is that the world runs on dollars. 
Like even to this day, I don't buy a coffee with Bitcoin. And it's not a technology problem. It's not a user experience problem. It is a logic problem. The world runs on dollars. And so what we are doing with Kin is I think we're one of the few projects that's hyper-focused on the go-to-market, hyper-focused on the consumer, and we're not going after the physical world at all. We're going after the digital world. And I think this is the really exciting thing about Kin is with Kick alone, we can make Kin the most used cryptocurrency in the world. That's going to give Kin potentially a very high value. And then we can take that value and use that incentive. Bitcoin uses that, that as an incentive to convince uh, miners to burn electricity. Ten, Bitcoin gives up $10 million a day to people to burn electricity. We at Kin are saying, that's crazy. Why don't we give that $10 million a day to developers as an incentive to build places for consumers to earn and spend? And not only that, not only can we incentivize them, you know, $10 million a day is billions of dollars a year. But in this new model, when everybody gets a stake, you know, Kick has a stake, and this app has a stake, and that app has a stake, as all these apps get stake, now if Kin goes up in value, all of their stakes go up in value. So now, for the first time ever, they're all incentivized to work together, to share users with each other. And I think this is the exciting thing we see with Kin is not by focusing on the physical world, but by focusing on the digital world, we can get tens, hundreds, billions of consumers all transacting, using, not for speculative value, but for real utilitarian value in a cryptocurrency for the first time ever. And that's our mission. That's what we're focused on, Kim. We want to be the most used cryptocurrency in the world. And how are we doing it? We're focused on the digital world. We're starting with Kick, and then we're setting up the incentive system to pull in more and more and more developers. I'm sure you're asked all the time, Ted, should I do an ICO? What do you tell people? So I think I'm a little bit contrarian here, which in 99% of cases, I say you shouldn't. I think most of the applications that people are hypothesizing about blockchain today are going to turn out to be pixie dust, and there's nothing actually there. I think supply chains on the blockchain, I think audits on the blockchain, you know, there's still trust somewhere in the system. Yeah, we don't have to trust the database, but we have to trust the people putting the information into the database. I think the bigger question is, what is the killer application of blockchains? And this is a question we like to ask at uh, Kick is, you know, when you look at the big shifts in technology, the once a decade shifts, you can start to see some patterns. What did the technology shift enable that was never possible before? And in there, you will find the killer apps of this era. You know, the internet was all about information. I can get information from anybody in the world. So what did we get? We got a massive product information site, a massive social information site, and a massive factual information site. With mobile, it was all about communication. I, mean, I never go offline. So we got massive picture sharing communication. We got massive text sharing communication. Yeah. So what is it about blockchain that we can do that it's never possible before? And my answer to that is we can build global trustless cryptocurrencies, medium of exchanges between parties, and we can get millions of people to work together to build them. And I think like when I look at Bitcoin, right, I think Bitcoin is amazing, but I think ultimately Bitcoin just my personal bet will ultimately, the value will go to approximately zero. Well, I'm sure the traders on his platform might disagree. I'm willing and to take that bet. I said it back seven years ago to Gavin. There we go, guys. And bet's bet. happening right now. Bet. It's being recorded. Ten year bet. I'll take on it. I'll bet you a million ten Bitcoin. Can. Ten Bitcoin. All right. We're ten Bitcoin. Ten Bitcoin. I'm not yeah, a betting see. man. I'm not a betting man. He said ten years, ten Bitcoin goes you to zero. You heard your first gentleman, ladies and gentlemen. I Last will say thing. the contrarian thing. I will say the contrarian thing. We're the first app in the world to go viral as a chat app, the first one to be a platform, the first one to do bots, and the first ones to do cryptocurrencies. The problem with Bitcoin is it's trying to compete with a world that runs on dollars. And the question is not who can get to the technology first to build a global currency, yeah. the most used currency in the world. If Bitcoin was used by a billion consumers every day and not just speculated on by a few million, what would it be worth? Well, we might need faster transaction times. And before but we I conclude, think that's the problem. I want, I want to finish. That's the problem with the way this industry thinks. It's all, if only we had faster transaction times, if only we bet, had a better wallet, if only we, the go-to-market is wrong, if only we had a better go-to-market. And I think that's what we are focusing on with Kin. That's what Telegram is going to focus on. And that is what Facebook is going to yeah. focus on. And in there, we will find the massive opportunity.